I believe that monk food isn't a type of food, but it's a philosophy of food. It's a way of thinking about food. The way that we do our food, it, it, it tells the story of our people, you know? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our fish here. We're gonna score them. We just go with snappers because all it is is just one bone right down the middle and you can just pick the meat right off. The reason why we score them is when we salt them, open them a little bit and get that salt right in there. We have lemongrass. We're gonna stuff them with some lemongrass. What you're gonna do is you, we're actually gonna smack them so that all the, it releases all the oils. And then rem, lemongrass actually smells like Fruit Loops. So we have some lemongrass, ginger, garlic, shallots here. Just gonna stuff it right in the middle. Open up the mouth, stuff the snapper. Put the lemongrass in the mouth. So we have this and then we're gonna grab um, the baskets and we're gonna put them back right into the baskets. There's this great big trend right now of like, oh yeah, we have you know open fire pit cooking, blah, 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 and all that stuff. And a lot of restaurants are doing that. And that's great. For me, this isn't just a trend. This is actually a part of who I am. This is how our people cooked, you know, hundreds of years ago. How our people still cook today. If you go into the hills of Laos, into the mountains of Laos, and you meet the Hmong people out there, this is how they still cook. This is probably one of my favorite ways to cook fish. It's just right on these baskets, stuff them and you just cook them right over the fire. Yeah, there's a couple of ways to know, know when the fish is done. It's actually, you look at the eyes. See, if, if the eyes is fully cooked and like that white part of the eye pops out, you kind of know that the fish is done. It's like, who needs CrossFit, you know? We need to do this. We have a wood purveyor who gets us this uh, Minnesota oak. I really love the flavor of it. Also too is like the heat is perfect. It doesn't burn super hot. It's awesome. I feel like Chris Evan now. Oh! Today we're gonna to be making what's called a V-Nai feast. And so basically this is just this big feast where we lay the table out with banana leaves and then we put all the food, all the grilled meats, the rice, the noodles, we put in the vegetables, we put all that in the middle. And then uh, we'll kind of talk about these, just these different components that we're actually gonna be breaking down, how we're gonna be cooking it over wood fire. We can do the center box now and then we can start getting that fire going. Oh my gosh. As we thought through this uh, cinder block grill, one of the things that I thought about was the fact that we just need something that's mobile and it's big. It's literally just two racks. So the bottom part here is literally just we'll stack wood on and we'll just cook and the wood will fall down. What I love about this grill is we take it anywhere. You can take this grill anywhere. The thing is, you just have to buy cinder blocks because cinder blocks break real easily. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a um, little log cabin and then uh, we'll throw a little bit of charcoal in and we'll light the whole thing up. The way that I learned English was watching TV with my grandma. Grandma had three people that she loved the most. One, she loved Chuck Norris. Two, Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. And three, MacGyver. And so my, my mom, would watch my dad like tinker with stuff and we'd be like, hey mom, where's dad? And my mom would be like, oh, your dad's outside being MacGyver. My cousin and I kind of just took that word and we just said MacGyvering. And that's what, like with this grill, that's kind of like, it's kind of like that. It's going to be raining today. We're going to figure it out. We're going to make it work. As the rain comes in, you're just like, okay, we'll just keep moving, keep changing, keep moving, keep changing. And you know, that's one of those things where I, like I tell people I love being Hmong because our people have never had the most ideal conditions. But I'm not trying to be a martyr. I'm not trying to be a victim about it. But it's like, okay, like think through it. What's the next process? What's the next thing you got to do? Start with chicken. We're not spatchcocking them. We're peeling them out. I'll show you guys how to do it. So we got both uh, two of our chefs here with us, Chandra and uh, Kenny. I almost forget, almost forget your name, dude. <laughs> Chandra and Kenny. Uh, so basically what we're doing is we're deboning the chicken. We're bringing the whole carcass out. So you see where the, where the rib meat is here and everything? I use the back of the knife and then peel it right off that meat right here. Just do the same thing on this side, okay? So when I was a kid growing up, this is my job. My dad didn't believe in signing up us for like baseball or basketball camp. This is, we'd just do this kind of stuff. Once you get to this part, you literally can just grab this and pull it. And then this whole bottom, this whole carcass will go to stock. This dry rub we're gonna do it has coriander, cumin, peppercorns, garlic in here. And, oh, and then we have Korean chili flakes and salt. And what we'll do is we'll put it in one of the cage and then we'll just throw it right over the fire. So 
So we just kind of put it on here, let it sit, and then we'll adjust uh, what we need to adjust. The most important thing when it comes to cooking with fire is a lot of people, they're afraid of fire because they're afraid like, oh my gosh, it's too, you know, it's too crazy. I don't know what to do. The thing that I love about cooking with fire is you, it's kind of like uh, the facts of life. You don't let the fire control you, you control the fire. This is kind of like the Rolls Royce of grills. It's a brand called Grillworks. So one of the great things about this grill is it has these grates where you can just go up and down on with the wheels. So it, you can really control that temperature. And what's so, it's my favorite thing about this. And this is where I get a little geeky, is watching that fat render. The little joys of life, that flame is gonna hit this chicken skin and that fat's gonna renders and drips down. It hits the embers and the smoke then comes up. You get that smoky, you get that little smoky flavor to it too. I think for me, like this is like my happy place to be surrounded by fire, or grilling, and cooking for friends and people you love. Like this is this is my happy place. This is where I truly just enjoy being at. I just feel like this is where things make sense too, you know? Pork is very important to the Hmong people. I mean, that is like, if you think about like a food pyramid for the Hmong people, like the pork is like that whole bottom third growing up. It was always pork everything. Like the bones was used, the innards. Some of my favorite dishes were like the offals from the from pork, like the heart, liver, the lungs. Those are some of my favorite dishes. I love it. This is the marinade we're making for the pork. Chandra's doing this up. It's kind of like, I just call it our Hmong sofrito. Lemongrass, ginger, garlic, shallots, uh, Thai chilies. And then we got some little uh, chili oil in here. We have tamarind, fish sauce, oyster sauce, a little bit of Korean chili flakes over there. And then, so we want this to have that, just that really good balance of um, sweet, sour, salty, spicy. Good. Don't, you can't do the head side. Like, oh. You'll be like, mmm. Yeah. <laughs> nice. We'll just salt it a little bit. Uh, and then when you grill this, what's really important when you're grilling this pork is you actually want it to be uh, away from the um, from the fire a little bit because of all the sugars in the sauce. Because if you keep it close to the fire, it's going to burn. So you, you want that caramelization to happen, but you also want it, it's kind of a low and slow kind of roasting grill. So basically just grill this guy, we'll just slowly turn it. You know, it's getting a little dark here. So I know that right here, this spot is a really hot spot, so I want to move this guy. So we have these beef ribs. What we do is I try to cut them right down the middle so then it's even between every bone. And what I really like is I really like having that little bit of that fat cap on top. The beef rib is one of my favorite, if not my favorite dish. And I think that what complements the beef rib really well is the Szechuan peppercorn coffee crust that we put on. And then the Szechuan peppercorn, you get that numbing sensation, which is super delicious. But what's gonna happen when we put this on the grill is again, that fat's gonna render down slowly. And as that fat renders down, it is just flavored by this coffee rub. These long ribs, they, they're usually low and slow, so you're gonna take your time on these, so you wanna really give it a, a good amount of time here. And then with the pork, the pork is almost done, so we just kind of push it to the side, and then we just let the, that residual heat just heat up the pork. The Hmong people never had a written language. Everything that we had about our people is oral. For a group of people that don't have a land of their own, country of their own, a flag of their own, what gets passed down historically about them is it's in their food. Our cultural DNA is intricately woven into the foods that we eat. And when you dine with us, you're not just eating a meal or you're not just eating uh, a dish. You're actually partaking in our history. So we have these head on shrimp. We get them from uh, one of our um, vendors here uh, called Fortune. We're just gonna throw a little salt in there. You just wanna cover everything in salt. Throw a little fish sauce in there. Throw a little bit of our chili oil in there. So we we'll just toss it up. Hmong people really love seafood. Like it's like, it's like kind of like a specialty treat for all of us, especially like head on, full, you, you peel, you work for the meat. So that's why we, we really love uh, putting shrimp on here, this grilled shrimp. We got this fire going, move it up a little bit here, and then just let the fire do the work. And what I really like about using shrimp that's whole with uh, the shell and head on and everything is that you don't have to worry about uh, really overcooking it. It actually really protects the inside, keeps everything moist. So we're gonna lay this table out with banana leaves. I always tell people that banana leaves are like nature's tin foil. Yeah, so we lay the table out and then we just start filling it up with all the food. 
What the V-Knife feast really represents is that bountifulness. You know, my, my dad told me that in the refugee camp, um, every morning when you wake up, you had to send, send somebody to go stand in line um, at the ration line and they would stand there, stand there, and then whatever ration they get, you bring it back and everybody kind of just gather everything that they, can, that they had together and that's what they would eat. And regardless of what it was, for them, it was this feast, it was this big meal that they had. One of the things I learned and my father taught me, and especially when we were little kids and we fight over little things, I mean, dad always said to us, when you say this is mine, you have less, but when you say this is ours, you have more. And one of the great things out of the last, this last year that I've really learned is that there's this fear of we're gonna have less, we're gonna have less, so everyone's grabbing to have their own. And everything in the, in the last year and everything that's happened, if we change our mentality and we think that this is ours, we actually have more. And with, with this V&I feast, it's like we sit down together, we eat together, and what we're saying here is this is ours. It doesn't matter how many pieces of chicken there are. It doesn't matter how many fish there are. It's all ours. In that kind of mentality, you have more together.